Hello, welcome to Soundbridge. Before we start this video, please take a moment to like, subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified every time we publish new content. In this video, we'll show you some of the new features we added to this latest update of Soundbridge and we'll show you our new product, Record, and it's a mid year arpeggiator. Now, to start it off, since the last video we've talked about, you know, Soundbridge updates, we have added Apple Silicon support to Soundbridge. And if you remember, we added the Z block order, which means that if some blocks are overlapping each other, you get this blue triangle and you can see them in this block Z order dialog. Now that same block Z order dialog can be seen in the merge window. So if I merge two blocks, go into the editor, click one of them, I get the same block Z order right there in the bottom. So I can see any block that is being overlapped completely or partially. Again, we added the same feature when you're recording audio. In the past, if you recorded audio over an existing audio block, it would just get overwritten. Right now, by default, that doesn't happen anymore. So if you just record something on top of an already existing audio block, everything will just be added to a block Z order dialog. So if I start recording right here, let me just solo this just like that. And I can talk, 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 talk. You can see I have a new audio block on top of the already existing one. If I click on it, I get this block Z order dialog just like that. It's no longer being overwritten and deleted. Now, if you wanted to change this to the old behavior, just go into preferences, go to the options and all the way down here, you'll see recording overwrites audio. You can engage that. And once it's on, it will have the old behavior of overwriting audio. I'll leave that off because I prefer it this way. Now let's talk about our new product called Record. Let me switch to this track and I will be adding Record to this track. So first of all, in Soundbridge, we have added the MIDI effect support, meaning that every instant rack can now load a VST instrument that has MIDI outputs as a MIDI effect right before the instrument. So let's say I add an instrument like this, let's say Vital to my track, I drop it. Now Vital is loaded as it would be before. And let me lower the volume on it. So if I play the chord like this, you can see I'm just playing three notes. Yeah, going into Vital straight. So if I add our new product called Record, like that, I can load Record right here, drop your MIDI FX right there. So I can drop it there. So now all the MIDI coming into this track goes through Record first and then is sent into Vital. Now Record is an arpeggiator, meaning that any input like that chord I just played is arpeggiated. If I turn it off, you see, still just three notes. Turn it on. And of course I can change styles. You have many different styles to choose from. You can explore that by yourself. You can also click the record logo and go into our manual. You can find all the details here in the manual. So let me go through these parameters and show you all in all what's happening with record. So as I already shown you, you can open the manual by clicking the logo right here. You can change the styles of this arpeggio. You can also click this hold button and it will hold any notes you input into it. So I don't have to hold that chord. I can just touch it. And now it plays all the time and I'm not holding any notes. You can speed up and slow down that arpeggio like this. Yeah, I can unsync it so it's not synced to the BPM of the song. I have the gate functionality, which is going to determine how long the notes are going to be. I can use the shift function and I can show you what that does. So if I play, we start from the lowest note going up. Let me just slow that down so you can hear it. But if I shift that by one, so I started from the E note now, and now if I shift it by two, started from the G note instead of the C. And if I shift it by three, we go back to the C and I start from the C note again. See that? So you can shift it back and forth, just like that. And I also have the swing functionality. We also have a re-trigger function, which is going to help us. And let's say when we set it to beat like this, it can re-trigger on a certain musical time setting, like one quarter note, just like now. And let me pull the swing down. You see, we never get to the G note because it's re-triggering before it's supposed to happen. 
So we can re-trigger this arpeggiation pattern at a musical interval you choose right here, if you set this to beat. If you set it to note, every time I add a new note to a chord, it will restart. So let's say I play three notes and then I add a fourth one, like this. And a new one. You see, it restarts every time I add a new note. Of course, I'm gonna turn that off for now. So I can make it that this arpeggiation pattern happens only once. You see, it was infinite, but I can make it happen only once and stop. You see, I'm still holding the notes, but it just plays once. You make it play only twice. And that's interesting. If you wanted only to do it, let's say twice, and then let's say restart every one one, so every bar. You see, it repeats twice and then re-triggers every beat. We also have these repetitions and distance parameters, and they allow you to introduce some transposing for cycles of this arpeggio. So let's set it to one, and that means that every other repetition is going to get transposed, and the distance is the amount in semitones to which we're going to transpose. It can go 24 up or down, and we'll set it to 12, that's an octave up. And let's hear what that sounds like. And let's see if we do it twice. So after the original cycle, we have two more repetitions and each one goes 12 semitones up. Okay, so for the last two features, I wanted to show you, I created a special scenario. So I have two tracks and I have record on one and then I have the vital on the other track like this. Let me just rename this one, vital. Okay, great. The MIDI coming out of record on this track is routed into vital right here. So if I click on the input of this track, I'll go to internal MIDI in, okay, from an internal source, record track 33, and then record. It actually appears as a MIDI source. So I choose that, arm is on. I've soloed only those two tracks and I wanna show you this velocity feature right here. What that's going to do is it's going to make the output arpeggio ramp the velocity from whatever velocity is dictated by the input notes to the target in this amount of time. What I need to do to actually show you that as well is I can map velocity onto the volume in this synth so you can actually hear it too. And that means that, you see, the way I mapped it is that lower velocity, lower volume, higher velocity, higher volume. I can close this synth, I don't need that anymore. We have this engaged. So it means that the velocity is going to go from whatever velocity these notes have, uh, 67, to target velocity, which is two, in a thousand milliseconds. That one second approximately. Okay, so let's start recording and see what the resulting MIDI is going to look like. Let's see that. Okay, look at the MIDI. So we have the arpeggio ramping down in this amount of time to that target from 67 from the start. Now we also have the retrigger function. It means that if the retrigger is on, the velocity is going to retrigger with the style as well. So let's try that too. I'll just record again. And you can see that it's re-triggering the velocity ramp as well. And the last thing I wanna show you is the scale feature right here. If right here I click and instead of chromatic, which is every note that exists, I select the C major, A minor. This is only white notes, by the way. So if I select that and now I record the output, it's going to move these notes and it's gonna transpose them if needed, a semitone down to actually fit the scale if they don't fit the scale. And they don't because they're all black keys. So let's try it. Let's record the output. And there you go. They all became white notes. If I turn that off, go back to chromatic, you can check it out again. You see that? Now they're black keys. So whatever scale you want, record can actually change any input notes into the scale you need so that you cannot make an error. And that's it for record features. Enjoy using SoundBridge and make some great music.